So this module is about the photoelectric effect and Einstein's explanation of it, which, by the way, led to a Nobel Prize for him. And what we got out of this was the quantization of light. So we know that the energy of a photon can be written as h plus constant times its frequency. And we know the frequency we could write as c over lambda. So energy of a photon is equal to h nu, which is equal to h c over lambda. Real nice equation, make sure you guys remember it, memorize it. So here's the photoelectric effect. Um, the idea is if you take a piece of metal in a vacuum, like this tube here, and put another electrode um, in that vacuum, and connect a, a voltage source, a power supply to it, along with a a meter that can measure the flow of current. What'll happen is, because the, the electrode here and the metal are not touching each other, um, you know, even if with a, a power supply attached to it, there will be no current being read. Now, with the photoelectric effect, what, what, what the scientists were, trying to str were struggling with back then to explain is that the observation that when light hit this metal, it didn't matter how intense that light was, and it didn't matter how bright it was, if the wavelength was below a certain number that depends upon the metal, then nothing happened. But if you changed the wavelength or the frequency of this light, and once you hit a threshold, usually we call that the threshold frequency, at that frequency or above, then no matter how intense or not intense, the, the dimmest light, one photon at a time, it's that you're still kicking off electrons. You see, the, the, the problem was they, they were doing things um, not quantized. And so the classical view is that an intense light you know, means a lot, of, um, a lot of energy, and so they, it should be kicking electrons off, but it wasn't. And then a really dim, low energy, you know, low, low intensity light would hit this and it would kick an electron off. What Einstein did was he looked at um, what Planck's result and said, well, if energy is, energy is being absorbed and emitted in chunks, um, why can't light be coming, you know, traveling around in chunks called photons? So this picture over here is, is the basic idea. If it's a low frequency light that hits the metal, nothing happens. Once you hit a certain frequency called the threshold frequency and any frequency higher than that, you kick electrons off of the metal surface. So that's the picture. Now here's, here's what Einstein said. He said, okay, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, the electron get, that gets kicked off, if one does, is equal to the difference in energy of the photon that hits that metal. And the, well, this is called the work function, really. Um, the, you know, the Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. So if you see the term work function, it just means Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. So, you know, this is an energy, right? We, you know, energy of a photon is h nu. This is an energy. Um, and this work function or threshold frequency, threshold frequency is just the frequency by itself. So it's the idea is that, that that photon, so Einstein's insight was that the light was hitting that metal as like kind of like little BBs, little chunks of energy hitting that, that metal. And each time a photon or a little BB hit that metal, either it had enough energy or it didn't. If the energy of the photon was bigger than the, ener the, the work function, then yeah, an electron got ejected. And the energy, the kinetic energy of that electron that got kicked off is a difference. So it took this much energy to pull the electron off the metal. Anything over that goes into its kinetic energy. So remember, kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. So we're talking about an electron. So this is the mass of an electron and the velocity of the ejected electron. Good equation, remember. Kinetic energy, one half mass times velocity squared. The energy of the photon, the incident photon that hits that metal, is, you know, like we saw, hc over lambda or h nu. Watch out, okay, this is a very special frequency called the threshold frequency, and it has that subscript little o. 
And this is characteristic of a metal. Each metal has a different threshold frequency or work function. Again, work function is just the threshold frequency times Planck's constant. So that equation makes sense, right? So let's do an example. So we're going to calculate the speed of an electron that's ejected, if any. So in other words, if the energy of the photon that's hitting the, the metal in this example is, is below the, the work function, then no, no electrons ejected. Right, so let's look back here for a second. So if, if you're just plugging into here and you get a negative kinetic energy, that doesn't make sense. And what that means is that no electron was ejected. So we have a, um, a photon that has a wavelength of 473 nanometers hitting a metal whose threshold frequency is 5.78 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So we're given this information. We want to calculate the speed of the ejected electron. The idea is we're going to first calculate the kinetic energy by using this equation and then solve the kinetic energy equation for the velocity or speed. So the energy of the photon, we're given a wavelength, so it's hc over lambda. Remember, you're, mem you're memorizing Planck's constant, h here, speed of light here. And again, what I do with these, these wavelengths is I just, if it's nanometers, I just write the number as it is, 473, and replace nano with times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Book all your numbers in, check my work, make sure you guys get the same number, really do that. Um, and we get 4.199 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Seconds cancel, meters cancel, left with joules. So that's the energy of the photon. We still need the work function, we're gonna get the kinetic energy. So the threshold frequency, we said was 5.78 times 10 to the 14th hertz or per second. That's Planck's constant. So plugging in here, we get the work function, 3.829 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Subtracting the two, we get a positive number. So yes, an electron is ejected. Now I'm watching sig figs here, right? So I'm keeping the powers the same and looking at two places past the decimal, both to 10 to the minus 19th. So I get to keep two past the decimal, so 10 to the minus 19th. But we were, you know, we don't write it this way. We're going to write it 3.69 times 10 to the minus 20th, but only two sig figs because of the subtraction. So now we know the kinetic energy of the electron. We solved it, you know, that's one half mass times velocity squared. This is the kinetic energy. We rearranged this solve for V. So what I did was I multiplied both sides by two, divided by the mass of the electron. There's a two. That's the mass of the electron. Remember, you're going to memorize that. Um, and took the square root because it's velocity squared and two sig figs from this guy right here. And we get 2.8 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. But wait, look at the units. How do these joules over kilograms square root make meters per second? Well, here's how. Remember, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So if you replace a joule with kilograms meter squared per second squared over kilograms, this is just the units from before. See the kilograms cancel, we get meters squared over seconds squared, we take the square root, there it is, meters per second. 